So, represent, I'm sorry, Senator Hendren, you recognized in Ben Ballinger and Ben Bale. Thank you, Madam Chair. My, my question is for Mr. Ingram, and I'd like Mr. Allison to comment on as well. It's this notion of the caps again. You said, Mr. Allison, you're, you're comfortable with that. But I guess what I'd like to know is what is, because we've been assured for the first three years, no state funds will be involved in the project. But what I'm hearing is if we have an unexpected increase in pre insurance premiums uh, and goes over that 4.7% cost increase that the state is on the hook for that, is that correct? Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, as, as the uh, current uh, terms and conditions state, uh, there is an annual per person cap on the amount of funding the federal government will give. Uh, at the end of the waiver period, any amount over that per person cap, the state is then responsible for refunding to the federal government. Um, the annual inflation amount is 4.7%. Yes. So, are you telling me, and I guess let me ask Dr. Allison to comment on this. And you said you're comfortable with that. So, you're, it, it, am I understanding that the total, the amount health care can go up over this three year waiver period is 4.7% per year, or the state's on the, the rest of it? Uh, I would defer, uh, I have forgotten the specific percentage increase, but I certainly wouldn't equivalent with the reading. I haven't read it, 4.7%, uh, that, that's fine. So right below that, uh, in uh, term number 62A, if I just read, if the state's experience with the take-up rate for the new adult group and other factors, and other factors that affect the cost of this population, in any case, the PMPM limit described above in paragraph A may underestimate the actual cost of medical assistance for the new adult group State may submit an adjustment to paragraph A, which is this limit, along with the detailed, uh, the detailed expenditure data to justify this for CMS review without submitting an amendment pursuant to state, uh, to uh, special term and condition number seven. Uh, adjustments to the PMPM limit for administration year must be submitted to CMS by no later than October 1 of the administration year for which the adjustment would take effect. So there's a provision included right along with those limits, which says, if we turn out to have been wrong in our demographic and our cost assumptions, et cetera, there's a provision to adjust, uh, to adjust that limit. Exactly. Nevertheless, I would return to the earlier comment, uh, our main goal is to achieve what the Health Independence Act sets out to achieve, if it does so, which are the terms that, that you all have laid out in establishing the private option, 4.7% would be straightforward. We've achieved competition, the beginnings of competition in the insurance marketplace. We are by no means uh, done. We haven't reached those goals. It's only going to affect the year. So if this is really about whether the private option works or not. And that's that's playing in the terms and conditions, just as it's, as it's playing in the healthcare independence act. Well, I guess what I'm trying to get to here is my understanding of that provision there, and again, that's a lot of legalese, and I'm not real great at grasping that quickly, but my understanding from a quick hearing of that is that that has to do with, as you say, your demographic numbers. If there's, instead of 250000 you end up with 350000 then they will make an adjustment to your total cost sharing. But I don't see what they say that we're going to waive that 4.7%. Not as a matter of say, well, it looks at 9%. Actually, it's, it's solely about the per capita amounts because, in fact, there is no aggregate limit, for example, on how many uh, participants there could be. So if, if, for some reason, there turned out to be 300,000, that per capita amount, along with the 4.7% inflation factor, would apply to the full 300,000. It's, it's not limited. So it really is all about that 